I'm at the Kerry Center in Quarry Bay now, where I'm about to interview George Yeo. George Yeo was a member of the Singaporean Parliament for 23 years, during which he served as the Minister for Arts and Communication, Minister for Trade and Industry, and ultimately the Minister for Foreign Affairs. He retired from politics in 2011, after which he came here to Hong Kong, where he's now based as the Chairman of Kerry Logistics. George Hill was a member of the PAP, the People's Actioning Party, which has governed Singapore for its entirety since independence. So, so he is very much a member of the Singaporean political establishment. So I'm very curious to find out about his views on Occupy Central and his, um, and his views on the, on the prospect of Hong Kong, given that our societies have developed uh, considerably differently in recent years. So let's see, let's find out what he's going to say. Um, so, as you know, the, the Occupy Central protests here in Hong Kong have been have dragged on for about three weeks now. And you've actually been to the protest site in, in Admiralty where sort of you witnessed the, the, the civic consciousness of Hong Kong's youth right on display. So, I'm curious to know why is it that Hong Kongers have developed this culture of passionate advocacy that Singaporeans don't have yet? Well, the two societies have uh, a different history. Singapore became independent uh, 49 years ago, mm -hmm. so it's had time to develop a local uh, political culture. Uh, Hong Kong has become um, part of one country, two systems, uh, relatively recently. And China's approach uh, so far has been to leave most things be as they were in the past. Uh, but a society has to evolve. And I, I think what we are seeing today is part of the evolution of Hong Kong's political culture within uh, one country, two systems. Right. But, you know, last week um, you gave a speech at, uh, at N NUS, you know, where you, where you spoke about how the, the civic consciousness of um, Hong Kong people is higher than that of Singaporeans. Now, now Singapore traditionally um, has, this, has its own sort of unique social contract, its own way of governance. But now that Singapore is a very you know, wealthy and prosperous society, do you think it's time for Singapore's um, civic consciousness to evolve into a more democratic one? Well, Singapore's civic consciousness is evolving, but in a different way from Hong Kong, because we are sovereign. And uh, young men all go through uh, national service. So they've learned discipline, they've learned how to uh, organize uh, mass events. Uh, but I was very impressed when I visited uh, the Admiralty site that night. It was the Sunday night, uh, the night when uh, CY, Chief Executive CY Long said by the following morning, uh, access to government offices and to schools should be open uh, by, um, by whatever means necessary. Um, that night, I brought some Indonesian partners to, to, to see what was happening. Uh, the students were highly organized uh, in, a, in a dutiful state. Uh, I was told later that many of them were on shifts, mm. uh, so they felt an obligation to be part of it. Uh, I was very surprised by the high degree of uh, internal organization and the cleanliness uh, of, of, the, of, the, of the entire site. That, to me, uh, speaks very well of young people in Hong Kong. Uh, this is quite apart from, from the politics of uh, Occupy Central. But you know, about two weeks ago, your successor, uh, Mr. K. Shanmugam, uh, came out effectively taking Beijing's side by saying that the central government's position on Occupy is, quote, entirely understandable. Does this unexpected statement from the foreign minister indicate the, the, the Singaporean establishment's concern about similar um, movements to its uh, you know, challenges to its own authority? Uh, no, that's the Singapore government's position. I, I can't speak for the Singapore government now, having left government oh. for three years. But I agree uh, with what he said. Uh, it's not just uh, uh, it's not just Singapore. Uh, if you read what Charles Poe, who was the principal assistant to Margaret Thatcher yes. during all those years when they were working on these arrangements, he said it's to be expected what China is doing now. He's is not at all surprised. And uh, recently, uh, Lord David Wilson, the second last governor of Hong right, Kong yes. before Chris Patton, yes. uh, at a debate in the House of Lords, mm -hmm. uh, he, he was not at all um, uh, uh, 
surprise that China is taking this position. And in fact, he, 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 was, he said what the Hong Kong police did within what he's aware of uh, was entirely in proportion. So it's not just Singapore which takes this position. I think it is right. very senior members of the British establishment right. who are involved in governing Hong Kong who take that position. But you know, many Hong Kong uh, media commentators were quite surprised by the foreign minister's um, statement because we've always thought that Singapore stands to gain economically from Hong Kong's crisis and potential chaos. So let me ask you this, Hong Kong and Singapore, are we rivals or partners? You know, David Wilson, when he was governor, I knew him then. And we talked about this and, and we agreed that uh, the relationship between Hong Kong and Singapore uh, is largely a cooperative one. We do compete here and there, but we have a large equity interest each in the other. And Lord David Wilson said, it's like the competition between Cambridge and Oxford. The rivalry is exaggerated for effect, but in fact the similarities are profound and the cooperative relationship dominant. More and more Singaporeans are working in Hong Kong and more and more Hong Kongers are working in Singapore and more and more families are linked by marriage. So in fact, if Hong Kong goes down, Singapore may benefit uh, in the short term but we would have lost greatly in our equity interests. Right, um, but you know, back in the 90s, you know, before Hong Kong uh, was returned to China, yes. the founding father of Singapore, uh, Mr. Lee Kuan Yew, um, he predicted that after 97, Hong Kong would become, quote, just another provincial Chinese city. In light of the recent political instability here in Hong Kong and uh, coupled with mainland China's ever-growing economic strength, do you, do you agree with the Minister Mentor's assessment of Hong Kong's I, I don't remember him uh, making those remarks, and neither do I know the context uh, in which those remarks were made, assuming they're accurate, which I'm sure they are, since you you've done your research. Uh, the point is this. I have not, no reason not to believe China when it says that one country, two systems under the basic law will continue till 2047. The question is what will be after 2047? Will one country, two systems cease to exist? I don't think so because uh, the existence of Hong Kong. So the big question to me is basic law version 2.0 in 2047, what will it be? Mm. And the more Any China, the Any more thoughts? China sees Hong Kong as being a part of China, the more China sees Hong Kong as being uh, Ai Kuo Ai Kang, yes. uh, and, uh, and uh, respect that the arrangements come from the National People's Congress, the more I think China will preserve the freedoms of Hong Kong because it is in China's own interest. Mm. And so you've spoken about the question for Hong Kong then is basic law, law 2.0. Like that's the question for Hong Kong. Now with this political instability and the seeming deadlock at the moment, how do you think Hong Kong's youth should, should help you know, contribute to uh, building that basic law 2.0? The, the paradox is this, version 2.0 will no longer be the result of an international treaty. Version 2.0 will be the prerogative of China's National People's Congress to put out. And the more the people who govern Hong China feel the Hong Kong people ai mm. the more they love both China Hong Kong, the more freedoms they will give Hong Kong. But if there is a question mark, or if there are many little question marks, then they will build into version 2.0 additional safeguards. Then the freedoms which Hong Kong, Hong Kongers enjoy will be reduced, not increased. So what Hong Kongers can get in 2047 depends on what happens between now and 2047. So it's, a, it's really an important challenge for, for, for the people of Hong Kong, particularly for the young people of Hong Kong, who will, 
who will live to see 2047, the life of, of Hong Kong. So the coming years are very important years, not only in themselves, but because they set the stage for version 2.0, which will come out in 2047. Right, right, okay. Well, um, I'm afraid that's all the time we have. Yes. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Yeo, for your insights. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. you.